Okay. Uh, so these are the homework first. If you check the homeworks, we, um, I mean, we will see the lesson till I try to stop it at 9.30, such that then we will check, um, or 9.40. Uh, we will have 20 minutes for half an hour to check if I mean, to check your problems with installing the Visual Studio, with Qt, and so on. So the first one was your exercise. These are the exercises that we started uh, in last lesson. Uh, and I told you, OK, continue it at home. Um, the first one was just to write a program in C++ to find the sum of these series. So in the first solution that may come to your mind is that, OK, I will have an STD string. In every iteration of my for loop, I will just add the uh, convert that uh, number of my uh, uh, iterator of my loop to a string and then concatenate the strings together. But this is not efficient at all. So we don't go for that, that thing. What we do is that, okay, we decode this series and we know that, okay, the first item is 10 times 0 plus 1. The second item is 10 times times one, which is this, uh, the, the previous item, plus two. This one, 10, 12, the results of the previous item, plus three. So there is one consonant here, which is 10, okay? And there is one iterator, one, two, three, four. And you have also one item here, which is this, the results of the previous elements in that three series. OK, so with this, you can easily write a for, uh, for loop and then calculate the sum of this. So whenever I would just wanted to let you practice with for loop and see, OK, how you can uh, change your uh, methods, I mean, your problem to something more efficient. So the second one was get a list of sorted numbers and a value. Check if the value is among the list. If so, return the position. I gave you this hint, but at the same time, I wrote for you in the last lesson that you can also use a city vector. For the moment, we use arrays, but to be honest, later in your work, you will never use arrays. You will use uh, the containers from a standard template library. So you will learn that later. Um, so, and since it's a sorted, list as uh, you suggested last time i mean you guessed last time that okay it's a sorted list we should not go for linear search the first thing that comes to your mind is that okay i check my value one by one and then i find its position and i will return it but it's a sorted list why should you do that you can do it like okay first the middle of the list if it's uh, if the key that I have is uh, smaller than the value in the middle so it's i will only search the left side if it's uh bigger okay then i will go only search on the right side and i will continuously do these things to be able to find the uh the position to to be able to find the key okay clear is there uh, a method within c++ that does this without uh working the whole function exactly so the good thing is that as you said you should, we should use the algorithm provided in a standard temple library rather than implementing them by ourselves. Why? Because they are more stable and efficient. But for the moment, you haven't heard anything about the standard temple library rather than I, whatever I say from time to time. But so for the moment that we implemented that ourselves and it was a practice for you too, to write a recursive um, a function because you should also learn about recursive function. It doesn't mean that, I mean, you have the sorted, um, I mean, the function to be able to find a value in a sorted list, but you should also know how to write a recursive function because there are some uh, scenarios that it can help you. So for writing a binary search, can you see already a problem in this one? But let me explain it and then. So, we have an array here, 
just assume one array. I'm just creating that. For arrays, when you want to find out how many items exist in your array, you have to go for such a structure. OK, but if you use a vector, you just write uh, dot size that 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 method returns uh, the number of items that you have in the vector. So th those are the things that we why we like to use vectors and it's not limited to that, but we will see later. So to get the number of items that exist in uh, this array, I'm using this uh, structure. I'm getting the size of the array itself in byte and then divided by size of the first elements in the array, which gives me, OK, the whole number of items that exist in this array. Uh, my key, the one that I want to search for, is 33 in this uh, list, which is here. And then I'm calling the uh, this binary search function. And I'm saying that, OK, start from this position, 0 to n minus 1, which means from the first of the array till the end of the array and search for this key, which is this number 33. What will happen? It comes inside the binary search uh, function and it will check if it's OK. First, if this makes sense, if these values that P and R, which is the first and end of the list, makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, OK, it's wrong for what I'm searching for. Uh, and it means that, okay, it doesn't exist in the list because you came up to a value that it's not there. Uh, and in that case, it will return only, min only minus one. Uh, otherwise, it will go into, inside the, this if else statement, if else, uh, if a statement, and find the middle uh, position. Then it will check if the, uh, the item in that position equals to num, OK, it's, we found it. It will return the position. If not, it will check. Can you see the problem here? OK, tell me. <laughs> Can you see the problem here in these two? By what I explained about binary search? You will do it two times the same check. Mm -hmm. How should we change it? So you have to change the equation or greater uh, than sign to less than sign. Mm -hmm. So for this one, um, we are saying that, OK, if it's bigger than num, I mean, if the item that we have is smaller than this value, the item in the middle of the list, then go and search in the left side from that item to the mid minus one. But if the, this item here should be smaller, so this should be changed to a smaller. In your slide is always wrong, so but you should know that. So if it's if num is bigger than the middle item, then you need to search in the right side of your uh, list. Okay. So that was the problem, but that's the whole thing. This is again, as I said, this is just for practice for you to practice how to work with re recursive functions. Um, how to think to write your programs efficiently, don't go for linear search, always think, OK, um, can I solve this problem but in a better way? Don't go for your fir the first thing that comes to your mind. And at, the, at last, you should also think that, OK, is it a function that's already implemented in C++? Is it a function that other people may want to use it? So if it's a function that's commonly used probably you already have it in a standard template library, and then you just go for that and just search it and use it because it's more stable and efficient. OK, clear? This one was clear? Okay, we go for the last one. The last one was write a function which receives two variables of the same type and checks if they are equal or not. Consider the following data types. So we have two variables of, variables of type integer. We want to see if they are equal or not. <laughs> and uh, bless you. Um, we have two variables of type strings, and we want to see if they are equal or not. What would be the first solution that comes to your mind? Starting with the very elementary solution. Yeah. 
having two functions and what would be the name of the functions? Mm. Yes, yes. Exactly. So the first one, we will have two separate functions with two different names. OK, but this is really bad because they are doing the same thing. They are just checking if they are equal or not. OK, the second one, as you suggested, it's overloading. Which is, which means two functions with the same name but different parameter types, because one of them is integers and the other one is string. Okay, but this is not best the best solution because the function bodies are totally similar. You see here, so I have two. Oh, I I have overloaded the functions. I have one integer. I mean one fun, uh, function called r equal. And the signature is this. Um, I mean, the signature is is not the same because the data types are different. So I can have two different functions with the same, with two different um, signature, with two, but with the same name, which is overloading. But the body is the same. I'm just checking if the first elem uh, elements. I mean, if the first uh, parameter equals to the second parameter. Uh, we said overloading is useful when we are doing the same conceptually, we are doing the same tax, task, but the body is different from each other. So we want to say to the reader of our program that, okay, these two functions are doing the same, but okay, inside the way that is implemented is different from each other. Uh, so what would be solution? The best solution would be template functions here because just da the data types is are, are the only things that is different here. OK, then we go for template functions. But at the, if we find time today at the end of the lesson, uh, we will learn about that. Clear? <coughs> OK. Uh, function parameters. Oh, no, not here. We need to come back to the previous because we stopped the lesson. We wanted to practice more last time and it was in the slides of last session. So function, we learn about functions. We learn what is function declaration, function definition. We learn uh, what is a function signature? Uh, but we didn't learn much about the function parameters and arguments. OK. So. Function parameter, what is a function parameter? A function parameter is a variable declared in the function declaration. You remember this one was the function declaration and this one was the function definition, correct? So this one is called function parameter. This one is called also a function parameter. But this one, when I'm calling the function, is called function arguments. But these keywords uh, can be used interchangeably in different companies, in different books. But for our course, we just call this one, OK, function uh, parameter. And this one is called function arguments. So, as I explained last time, as I explained last time, okay, do it. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> but you can see it and see underneath. If there are just no goals. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> okay, so as I said last time, if you look at here, we said that uh, the parameters that we define here will be created here and will be destroyed here because it's in a scope, correct? So the question is now, how can we pass the arguments to the parameters, to the function, okay? We have different ways, by value, by reference, by const reference, and by pointer. The first one is by value. So we have this one, this is called by value because you're just creating a variable here and you are passing the value of this, uh, I mean, the value six or the value of this variable, which is defined in the scope of the caller, not the function itself. And you're just passing this to, to the function, okay? These arguments, are never changed by the function being called, which prevents side effect. So if you send, for example, here, you can also write variable y, okay, which you define in the color scope, okay? But if you send the y to x, whatever you do inside that function on x will not be reflected to y, because x and y are two different variables, okay? You're just sending the argument by value, not the argument itself, okay? So this helps you, okay, you don't have any side effect, but there is one problem. You are making a copy inside the function, okay? By defining integer x, you are creating a copy of y, okay? But if you have a struct or if you have a class which are consisting of so many other variables, this is not good because you are creating a big copy of them inside your function, okay? So as it's written in here, copying structs and classes can incur a significant performance penalty, especially if the function is called by many times, okay? Every time that you call the function, you create a copy. If it's recursively, okay, you are recursively creating them. So when we can pass the arguments by value, if they are only fundamental data types like integer, character, double, float, these are the fundamental data types or enumerated constants. These are your fundamental data types. You can pass them by value, no problem. Or you don't want the, uh, the function to make a change, and also and, not or, and the function doesn't want to change the argument. Okay, so if you want to change your arguments, uh, even if it's a fundamental data types, you cannot send them by value, correct? So when we should not pass the arguments by value, when we are passing the structs and classes, the classes that you define yourself, or uh, the classes from even, for example, vectors, all the data types that you have in a standard template library, they are template classes. Okay, you cannot pass them uh, like a CD array, CD vector, CD string. I see very often that people, uh, I mean, the students uh, confuse and they think that a string is also a fundamental data type. It's not. In C++ it's not. In Python it is. Uh, so even this one, you cannot send them by value because it's a big data type. Okay. For every character, you will require one byte of memory. So imagine you, know, you have a text of 1,000 characters. You store it in a string, and you have 1,000 bytes, which is one megabyte, and you're sending one megabyte to a function. <laughs> so what is the other option? The other way to pass the arguments is sending them by reference, okay? But first, we need to know what a reference is. A reference is just another name for a variable, okay? So I, I'm defining an integer i here. It's a variable of type integer, okay? Now I'm defining a reference which is referring to i. It's not a pointer. Don't confuse them very much, okay? 
So it's not a pointer, it's just a reference, another name for I. So whatever I do on I and J, it's the same. So it will be reflected in the other one. Both of them are referring to the same location. So if I put I5, it's as if I write here J equals to 5. OK, and J6. So here at the end, I have I5 here. I have J6 here. I have I'm adding them together. I will be 12. J also will be 12. So here if I print this two, it, both of them will be 12. OK. So they are the same. So how can we use references when we are calling, when we are defining a function? So in this one, I think we had an example last time that was, OK, let's define an error type and then let's um, use it in a function. So this is the answer here that you can see. So first I'm defining an e, um, enumerated constant uh, of type class, OK? Uh, I have two different uh, error type here, no error or wrong input data. OK, and I'm using this naming convention just for uh, for readability. So I, they are in capital letter, but they can be in any format. And then I have plus one. It's a function. It's not good to write a function just for plus one. It's just for example here. OK. Why should we have a plus one function when we can increment it like this? OK, so I'm writing plus one here and I'm saying that this function has a parameter of type reference. So if I call plus one here, I am, I'm creating a value a variable here, which is my va value of type integer and I'm setting five. I'm calling plus one by this one. If I didn't have this one, imagine it was just int underline a. Can you see also my cursor here? There. Oh, I, no, you cannot. Oh, it's now we can. Oh, okay. So if I put my cursor here, and you then imagine if we don't have that ampersand there, it's just int and a. Then it's called by value. So if I send value which was five here and I send it to uh, pass it to plus one inside this one nothing will happen a will be a will be created recreated okay a will be created with the value five a copy of the value five and then if I plus a a will be six and then a will be destroyed here and it, the change will not be reflected to the value if I don't have this ampersand, if it's just by value, OK? But for now, what will happen? For now, I send five there. A is just a reference to value. It's not a completely need, an independent variable. It's just a reference, OK? So what will happen? A will be plus one, so A will be six. That means that here value will be also six. Clear? Yes? So it's similar to the previous example. We had here whatever I was doing on I will be reflected to J. Then. So I have a question. What if we change the void and make no problem. That would be it. Will, okay. Will you still need the end? End? What do you mean? End? Ah, yes. So in C++, when you define a function, you have to have the, oh, the end. Oh, okay. You can also, these are different things. Um, you can either have an output value, um, at the return type, let's say, and then you return your value. Or if you have, but the thing is that for that you can also only return one value, one variable, correct? Mm -hmm. But if you want to return multiple items, multiple variables, then you need to use by reference. Okay, for here it's just an example. I just wanted to show you, okay, I mean, by, by nature, this function is wrong. You should not define such a function. 
Then second, yes, okay, you need to return that. Why? Because you don't have multiple uh, items to be returned. Why should we have it like this? Okay, it's more clear. Um, but don't confuse them with each other. <laughs> Uh, and last time in uh, my in the slides, I mentioned that okay, if you have um, let's see, let's see, if I explain them, they will be confused. So for the for this uh, slide, did you understand this one? That okay, if you pass it by value, if I don't put and here, whatever change that I make on a will not be reflected on value. But if I plus put the ampersand there then whatever change I make on A, it's as if I'm making a change on value. Clear this one? Okay. <clears throat> but here, here I'm going to in this function, um, I forgot your name. Uh, Asma, sorry. Um, so look at this one. I have one thing that I want to, I, I'm, uh, the function is doing uh, the division. OK, between A and B. OK, and I want to return the value, the results of this division by float. OK, but this division can be also wrong. If B, for example, is zero, then the vision is wrong. I need to return another item, which is my error. Correct. So I have two things to be returned. In that case, I have this error here as the uh, as calling um, as by reference, okay? And also one float to return the results. Okay? So it's not like that you, if you want to return your values, if you have only one, you use your return type. But if you have more, then you use passing them by reference. Okay? If it's not clear, you can tell me. I don't understand why you have to use the reference instead of just returning multiple values. Because I, when, when you return, whether you uh, either return the division or the error message, they will return them both at the same time. No, it's not like Python that or MATLAB that you can return multiple uh, items. In C++, you can only return one item, one variable, let's say like that. If you're, it's a struct or if it's a class, which means that a class has multiple variables inside, can have multiple variables inside. But despite that, it's, it's, for example, you will define a variable of type a class. Still, you can only send that variable, but that variable includes other variables too. Okay. For example, if you have a vector, you can send, you can define a variable of type vector and return that vector, but that vector includes many other variables. Okay, but in you cannot have like C++ that you write, I mean, like Python or MATLAB that you write return A and B. With comma, you can separate them and return them in Python. Okay, you cannot do that in C++, only one. Okay. So if you have more, then what you do, you use call by reference. One here, the second one, the third, the fourth, all of them will be the input parameter of your uh, your function. You see, we don't return A and B. No. Return A yeah, but they are const by reference. I will tell you why. OK. So <clears throat> A and B, as you said, it's not going to be uh, changed. We said, OK, again, it's an example here. You don't know many variable data types yet, so I can the, I cannot come up with, for example, classes here for you and show you why I'm using const reference. I said in the previous slides here, when passing fundamental data type, it's fine to pass them by value, OK, because they are not big data. But if it's more, if it's bigger, it's not good to um, send them by value. But it's a scenario similar to here, A and B, imagine A and B were big data, okay? You don't want to change them, but how can you send them? And you want also, you don't want to uh, copy them because they are big data. 
So you cannot go for call by reference because you don't want to change them. You cannot go for call by value because you don't want to make a big copy of the data. So the second, the third option is called by const reference. OK, and what does it mean? It means that, OK, send them as a reference. But don't change A and B. And inside the function, you cannot change an A and B. But the good thing is that you're not, you're safe. You know that, OK, A and B will not be changed. Whatever you pass, it will not be changed. OK, let's see it here and then we go inside. Uh, I'm defining a variable of type float uh, with 10. I'm defining an error type uh, and a um, variable of type er error enum, and I'm initializing that with, with this uh, value. And then I'm calling the compute division with imp and ip. It can be another variable, it's just an example, okay? Really? <laughs> so, and then the error here. So, error will be changed inside. I don't think that we can do anything. No, inside this OEM. Really? Yeah. But they are still protesting? Yeah. Well, they will be going for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, I need to go to Lubin after the class. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to me. <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> okay, error is an error type and it's going to be sent to this function, passed to this function and it's by reference, so error will be changed. Or at least there is a chance to be changed. Whenever you are reading that, they are closed to, I, I don't think, if we close the door, will it change anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. So we have to bear. <laughs> Um, so, if you read a function declaration or function definition like this, you can guess already that what's going to happen inside the function, okay? So you know that, okay, this one will be changed. This is by reference. So here it comes in A and B, both of them are initialized by imp, which is 10 but imp can, will not be changed because they are const by reference because A and B will not be changed, okay? So in, it comes inside, it will check. If it's not equal to zero, B is not equal to zero, then A will be divided by B and the result will be returned as the output and I will have the output here. So unlike, simple, uh, unlike Python, you cannot have, for example, if you ha could send multiple vari uh, variable, if you could return multiple variable, you could just write comma, another variable here, true? But here in C++, you cannot. It's always one variable here, okay? So, uh, and what will happen here? It says, okay, we, are, we have an if a, if a statement here. It's checking B with zero. But if B is not, if it's not zero, it's already returned, okay? The error will not be changed. Error has its value from the past, from before calling. But now error will be set. When it comes here, it's the time that B is B equals to zero, okay? So error will be wrong input data. So you don't need to write else here to get here. Clear, Asma? OK, uh, so and then after the function, this is an error handling way of um, your problem. I mean, you're handling the error. So after the function, you are responsible to check first error. If there is an error, you cannot trust result. OK, because result is a wrong day value. Correct? So first you will check if error doesn't equal no error, then OK. It's I mean, it equals to no error, then the results will be printed. This is the results of your division. If not, OK, error handling. For this error handling, you have a function that will convert these values to a string. Or if you have a GUI, you will show a pop up uh, window 
and it will show a message. OK, so it's like that. So for error handling, what you can do, you return either integer and bo Boolean values. For example, you are um, checking uh, the position of a value inside a, a list and your function is responsible for that. So you can, the return function, the return value can be, that might not be a good example. Okay, imagine the same example here, compute division. I could either return this one or have an, again, not, so just imagine that you can, for, you can return your error here as a Boolean, for example, if it was successful or not true or false okay if it's just a true and false you can return it like that or it can be an integer value and then okay you have a coding of your integer value somewhere but it's not recommended only do it if it's boolean and true and false and it's in it's in, in a nested function inside a very deep function very simple thing and above function you in above function you will do the error handling like this so in that case, it's fine. You can do it with uh, this way. Another option, throwing an exception. That's what you do also in uh, Python. Okay, if there is an error, you throw an exce exception. So here I could just throwing an exception. But what's the problem with throwing an exception? If you throw an exception, it will be thrown. It's not like that it will co come back to the caller. It will come back to a try cache uh, statement. It can be, for example, you have a function A, and then you have inside A, you are calling the function B. Inside B, you are call calling the function C, okay? If you have an error in function C, and you throw an exception there, and if you don't have a try catch in B and you have your try catch in A, then it will return to A. How can you can you concentrate? <laughs> can we make it what time is it? I think we can try to solve the Visual Studio problems because I don't think that you will learn like this. <laughs> We can try to solve those Visual Studio problems on your PC and in the worst case scenario, if they go, they are gone, we continue and not, we will create a makeup session. Do you agree? So we, uh, or we do the online and ask questions, what's the best? Uh... No, because you see sometimes during the lesson you have questions yeah. and I prefer to really uh, give the lesson. But can you also check you in your calendar because we have only 10 lessons. What will happen after these 10 lessons um, on Mondays for your program? Uh, on Monday, we probably have a exam. Yeah. So, you have exam? No, lab. Ah, lab. Just check it. Uh, I think you are also biomedical as Monday. Can you also check your program? <laughs> With this one, I don't think that you can understand. We just ex if we, the, there is one Monday after this class empty for you, we can just extend it. Uh, so it's uh, up until the, the vacation that we have your class, and after that we have or we have. We have more lessons. Oh, five yeah, more yeah, lessons so, after that. Yeah, no. After that we have um, a lab at nine o'clock. So. Uh, ah. yeah. <laughs> So I don't know, and uh, maybe I can check it on your calendar. Maybe they. So we thirty-three. We have your class, and next week we have a lab. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, yeah, it's a But where is that lab? Yeah. And what will be the next week? Will we have another? Next uh, week we, we could like go from 10 to 12 if you. Okay. So I don't know if they are stopped or not. 
12 seconds. Won't that be too late for our project? Mm -hmm. Because when do we have to return the, when do we have to send in the project? Ah, yes. That's a good question. Uh, let's. I mean, need to define your ex. What is your exam period? Um, I can check it from last year because at the time it's similar. Uh, from the twenty twenty seventh of May, uh, then the block is, uh, starts. Um, so a bit. So actually twenty five. But let me check. Um, probably it would be around the same date, and then we can. Choose the um, only way you do it next week. It's uh, as we all said from 10 to 12 next week, Tuesday. On Tuesday, I don't have classes. Oh, very good. <laughs> For uh, this period of time, um, I mean, within a couple of weeks, we will start having classes on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they are gone. But uh, let me check Canvas. But for your Q&A session, can we set, uh, for example, a weekend? Because if you have the Q and A session in, during the uh, class, then for sure I will need one makeup session. And it's not obligatory for everyone to come. It's but it's recommended because it's just we just sit and answer your questions. And it's online, by the way. Okay, so let me check then. Um, <coughs> They are gone. Okay, canvas uh, history. I'll be going to the Nesip Nanak more the rest of the week as well. But if you listen, you should take me from the same Yeah, I'll talk to Amy. Okay, 20 seconds. Can I have a few less? Yeah, but I'll start now. 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 Your holiday will start here? No. Uh, it starts the third. No, the eight. No, the eight. This one or the <laughs> one? The first of April. Ah, uh, uh, here. Okay, it was the start here. Okay, and you no, have. No, Saturday, Thursday. So the week from 25 to 29, we have still uh, class, and then then two weeks. We yeah. Week 20. First of April is the 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 first week of the the application. Till here. Yes. Yeah. The, okay. The so. These are your vacations, and we have, this is our third lesson. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, normally we had five lessons bef only before your um, classes, but then we will have more. Maybe this year we had started early. <laughs> Um, yeah, because it's also strange. Uh, the Q and A session last year was in twenty second of five. How is it possible? How is this possible? But no, we don't put it like that. Um, normally, we put the Q and A session after the fifth lesson. So the fifth it now is third, four, five, eighteen. Then 
to me it was another pure exercise. Yeah. But otherwise, we can we can maybe have uh, a extra class Thursday. It's morning. Thursday. This Thursday. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, wait, wait. Yeah, this Thursday or next Thursday. Both of these. Okay, but for the moment we don't need the extra because they are gone. no. <laughs> the moment that I want to say they are gone. <clears throat> okay, but just let's first uh, fix a date for the your Q and A session, and then we will go for the makeup uh, session later. So for this one, we can go for eighteen. No, but if you put it in the weekend, Adrian can for sure join. So we can put it either 16 or 23rd. 23rd, I think, is better. Yeah, 16, I have uh, a competition. Okay. okay, okay, okay. How about 23rd for the people? That's fine for all. And it will be only um, 15 minutes for each uh, group. Okay, so I will write the Q&A session in that if anyone has a problem, we can uh, say. Dashboard. <coughs> Let me already write it. Q. So it's not yet fixed because there are some people who are not in the class. I just suggest that if there is no negative feedback, <laughs> and then uh, we suggest that we. This in the class is suggest that we have a session. How many groups we are? Three? Uh, okay, three. Then we can make it half an hour for every group. Last time they were even there was one truck that was playing Baby Shark on that's the one. I do not have the particular vision, but it is my comment. What else? Thank 
question and then the situation the, the, was it deemed to the But the problem is that um, if you put the 23rd, by that time, will you be able to do to start your projects? Well, we'll try. If uh, Q team in GW uh, works, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Because normally we put it, at, I mean, like after, I mean, after this break, if after your holidays and people during the holidays are doing their projects. Yeah. So they had a nice progress to receive a feedback. But the problem is after the holidays, we have um, a lot of other labs and things like that. So it takes a lot of time mm. <laughs> out of our day. Okay. So, but we still can put the feedback and soft 23 to 13th, such that you have more time to... Yeah, we could, it, we, we could put it uh, the 30th of March or I, in the middle of the, the vacation, if you prefer. No, I just want to, I mean, because if you don't do anything and come to the Q&A session, you don't learn anything. But I was, my plan was to begin this weekend, but uh, yeah. yeah. So I you, also you prefer to, to interact? So I, normally I will have something, but I don't know how fast it will go to progress. But so the plan was to begin now. Okay, that would be great. You sh that should be your plan. So it's still 23rd? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, for me, there is no difference. I just want you to be I mean, more suitable. If wanted. we have the deadline also, we will be uh, driven to... Okay, okay. I got it. Okay, then 23rd. So you pro... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Screen. 
Okay, join uh, with your team members to these groups uh, for different time and slides that we will have. And every group will have um, a half an hour. You can also attend if you really like. You can also attend other people's time and slides, no problem. For exam, it's not possible. For Q&A, it's possible because maybe you can learn from all the other questions that people ask. Um, that's it, I think. Um, Let's go for your problems. Hmm? And um, for a makeup session, uh, I think we can put it for the end of the lessons. The Monday you have one Monday for at eight a.m. Uh, you have one hour. And the next, the week after, you also have uh, like a, how much was it? It was four hours. So don't use your uh, Mondays. I mean, the Mondays that we have after the 10th lessons for other things, if possible. If somebody asks you. Is it okay? Why? For makeup session. Such that, okay, our agenda stays as it is. But OK, it will be extended. But let's see if we need it, because now we put it on 23rd. OK, your problems with uh, Visual Studio and Qt. They already have another problem. So, <laughs> so I downloaded 2017 profile. Mm -hmm. uh, because I had to search. So I made my initial size in 22. But now when I open the exercise, Maybe it's because it's not compatible or something, but the size for the vector that I used uh, is not, not working. Yeah, I mean, they just uh, say class uh, as a CD vector with no member size. It's, ah, size is, I think, with the capital letter. Uh, it's in the 22, it's not. So that's weird. <laughs> uh, Did you also install the Okay, but check if it's with the um, capital letter. Maybe I'm wrong. But let me also see the um, arrows. But I need one check. So if it's in the it wouldn't be easy to So you created the, this project in another one? Yeah, in the so maybe it's So yes, you need to prefer the error that you're getting is because of this. Okay. So that's okay. But so fair, now do it. I mean, create another project in uh, 27, but close this one because otherwise the project will be created mm -hmm. inside this. So in one solution, we can have one project. So we shouldn't use uh, 2020. Recommend it because I prefer that we all use the same Visual Studio and all the links that I'm giving you is 2017, so it's better that we go for it. Okay. 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 Ok
when I look for like, all the Q made of AC, that the only means GW is this one. Um, and so when I copy the address, I put it in here. Then I get this error. That's just the name that I gave it. But, okay, can we? Okay, so that this is in, what are you doing now? Okay. So that's in fact. This is not the version that I gave you. Otherwise, it wouldn't be this nonsense thing. So let's do something else. Uh, let me see. This is not that one. No, it's not that one. Where did you get this one? But maybe we can go back and I'll be honest. So this one. Uh, do you have the installer uh, of this one? Let me check the file. No, this is the admin. The admin. Open the links that are, I mean, the, your cameras, and then you can follow them. This must be. All right. Well, yeah, I just must be. Why? Okay, this is, I think, this is what the definition that we got. Where do you get your error? Because I don't have this. I don't know where to see it. Go to the uh, options. I think all of you are. Uh, but okay, like, can we go to your cameras and then we see the links? I want to check what we should do. Here. So you started with the uh, Visual Studio first. You installed this one. You got this one, and then you installed it. You had no problems in here, and then you got this one, and then after that you got. So yeah, the f the first time I did at Qt, um, I had this this kind of window, mm -hmm. but now yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's have the outdated version. I mean, the thing is that if you remember. Uh, the QTVS admin, it will update itself, okay. and then we will have problems. It happens last year too. Oh. So you need to disable the update thing. But I didn't update. He, he proposed an update, and I just uh, refused. Re but it's updated. You see, it's yeah, but then this is this thing. From uh, okay. different from this one. Uh, from yeah. that. How to mm -hmm. install this? This I had that exactly that. Then I put a path. Okay, okay, two times. Then it's. Uh, yeah, but it will automatically update itself. Uh, you see that the option the options are not similar to that photo that I we have there. Yeah, but maybe just the next step. Of this step. No, no. And how do we? Uh, but let me. Uh, we can uninstall it, but I need I need to remember where was the location that I should disable the update. Mm, that's where I did it and I shared it with the students, but I don't remember now. Um, Check my messages to those Okay, you two filters in here, you want to be Did you 
We gaan doorspelen naar de En onze reden, we vragen van door te tegen, van 10 tot 12, of van 14 tot 16, maar wie die naar zich tegen 8 tot 10. Ja, ja, ja. Ik heb het niet Ik heb het niet Ik heb het But to do so, you need to uninstall it and then install it again. But let me see on my PC, I will tell you. Um, it still says it's the 
Okay. I guess it, yeah. Okay. So you come here in either you go to tools and then extensions and updates. Here tools, uh, extension and updates. And the first thing is for me it's cute. The Visual Studio tools. Okay. So for in a, on installing that, first listen to me and then do the things that you are doing. Okay. So first on you uninstall it, and then after the uninstalling, I would just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. these options, you need to remove this option. I guess you all have a tick on that, okay? So first uninstall, and then install it again, and then when you install it, I mean, when you are, before installing it, remove your connection from the internet, okay? And then come, come here and remove this stick and then connect yourself to the internet. Because in the, you may have some delay and it starts to the updates immediately. So here, you can, you can do it, we have time, you can do it now.
But we need to also the closer. Wait, we need to also go to the there. We need to set the kind of the options. Now you see it's the old way. But if it's already there, it's fine. <laughs> It should be okay, but we'll put it by the time it's done all that, but it's okay. Because if they end the right link, then I'm going to take it from the way of the body of this thing. Is it all also with this? Yes. Yes. It really includes lots of things, you know, I think it includes the red. Right. We need to go to the five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not the third part. Check the best one in this place here and follow them. You already have the um, you already have this. Okay, we start at all. We have the proper the Yeah, but I <laughs> but you have stopped cute already or not? What's up? Um, yeah, I have this. But I don't know if you want to store that. Um, can you give us the path of, yeah, okay, yeah, can you go to, I, I assume that if you are in a solid, you, I, I but you, so you install the QT, this thing on there, uh, it asks if you want to connect directly to, to, to mm -hmm. 2017, and I just did that and then disappeared, so. Yeah, but I think you didn't, she didn't install it, but at the first step you need to install QT. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. This you went to there, you got that working version. Did you install the file yet, or do you just download it? I don't know. And then, yeah, then maybe, but it's not a good question. Which one is the one that's not? I think you can make a good one. Do you also install it? Well, I forgot my PC account because I wasn't saying that. I wasn't that long from 12 to 3. But did you install your things? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, but I just installed Visual Studio at the end. Okay, but I still After you yeah. installed that, yeah. they don't know that 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 they don't know after this, I have to see the image of 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 the
and then they have this thing, and he suggested that it's with the same way that you would like to Sitting in the city of 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 but also, the not all of you in the 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 of the So when you see in front of this thing, it would be in the front of the story, not looking in the the front of the story. And this thing is back in the back. Okay, and so we already have to look at this one, and then we take it. Then we go for the back, then we run to and start back, then we do this one, then we do that. Okay. And then when we start it, and then we go to the thing that's taking the back, we need to go to this back. Okay, but before doing that, go to the two, and go to the front. Because it's already recorded, so you can see how I do that. But you are a convenient method. And then so the thing is that you just follow this step. Okay. There is one um, exception that you do before installing this DDS app, mm -hmm. which is just an extension for the video studio. You will disconnect on this part. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have is that it gets updated by itself, and then you will have a uh, compatibility of it. Okay. So what you do, you disconnect on the internet, you install it, and you then you go to Visual Studio, you go to the schedule and you do it. Yeah. It's already also recorded, I don't even want to show you yeah. that. Uh, you go there, and then you just write here, I think it's close. Extension for an update here, since it you already answered it. She doesn't have that. Then you install it, you will have it. Then you install that, you just disable this one automatically off your computer, yeah. such that it doesn't update yeah. itself. Uh, okay. But you can always see if it works. QT which is responsible to well, to help you with the GUI. I will teach that you will there. But there is another thing, QTVS hacking, which is just an extension for your Visual Studio, such that you can work with the Qt files easily. It's just for your ID. Okay. Uh, question about it. So these two are two examples of really easy. Um, I didn't Ah, okay. Because there was trucks uh, wanting the bombs. Okay, yeah. So because of that, we, we said, okay, we don't continue. We can solve the issues that we have there. Yeah, okay. And then probably we'll have a little session that we can end up with. Okay, that's a show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did we only start here? Oh, I see. Did we only start here? Yeah.
I think the last thing was just by reference. So there we are. We didn't touch them. Because there was some activity also that from the last time. Um, so are we having a new lesson? It will be at the end of the okay. so it will stay at on Monday, such that the law will not be confused. But the thing is that um I say at one week after the end of our lesson, you have only one hour to eat. It's because you will have another class that's close at nine. Mm -hmm. So either we will decide to have that one hour depending on how we progress uh, during the course, or we will have it the next week, the next one in the in the following week. The following week you have four hours until the same level starts. Okay. So but we will stay on the end. So you want to give some of the data and 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 the But uh, for the remaining time, we can write some uh, small programs. I can show it to you. Wait. Okay, I suggest you write this function, just a small function, this one, last one in your Visual Studio and try with by value and uh, by reference and by conf conference reference and see what would be the difference. Okay. I can send it on. Um,
Did you write this? <laughs> to write this one function. No, no, it's just not another um for the But don't go for empty project like that. Uh, close it and then create another project. It's normally when you do empty project, you use. You use. Uh, yeah, but you have better and yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Then we'll use this notification to ask you some questions. Maybe you're not going to click on that thing. And then here you put empty project. And then you should do A dollars. Why don't you see anything? <laughs> oh, okay, solution. You got the point? It's still. So you don't work with system. System. Mm -hmm. And then you both have to go. Mm -hmm. And you both have to go. 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 What if the the years are in the branch? It's a thing that's called the 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 thing if there's such a thing, the function will not be this is found down here. But if you are behind the variable itself, you have to be by the end of the function. You have to be behind that for I mean, you are doing this, I do not know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I think you want to use real numbers, so I don't know if it's great for my life. I don't know if you can, uh, because you can also have to use it. And I will take from the main and I'm not going to use it. That's easier to think of this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So, please also join Mac with your team members to that QA sessions. And uh, you said you sent me an email yesterday. Which address do you send it? Yeah. What was the 
I have one email last week from Chris. To um, Etro account or VUV account? Mm -hmm. So then it's not that person. And what was the content? You just define your project. Yeah. And what was the voyage projects you're going to? Uh, ah, school system. Okay, you go for a school system. You're going for uh, the first one. Okay, then I need to, if I, I have to bring the Raspberry Pi and uh, Google Coral for you next week. Let me put it in my calendar. Bye. Uh -huh.